I love a good father-son relationship bonding story, and I'm certainly not the only one. The complexity and importance of fathers and sons connecting have been a powerful storyline throughout human history. From Greek mythology to modern day Hollywood blockbusters, it's easy to be drawn into the complex dynamics of a special bond shared between the generations. Building strong bonds between fathers and sons on purpose is what we're gonna be talking about today on the Raising Them Ready podcast for parents. Here we encourage and support parents are doing the best they know how to raise their kids to become confident, capable, and kind in an ever-changing and often unpredictable world. I'm your host, Jonathan Catherman. I'm a family man, career sociologist, and best-selling author who believes our children's greatness tomorrow begins with good guidance today. I recently sat down with my good friend Todd Sambuco to hear some stories from an adventure trip he took to Montana with his son, Caden. We recorded our conversation in the back of his shop at Sambuco's Barber Company. See, Todd's a master barber and owner of an elite barbershop proudly established for men who can't afford a cheap haircut. He's the nicest gruff guy you'll ever meet. Todd is literally tattooed head to toe, yet he's first known in the community for his welcoming smile and always open handshake. Todd's adulting age son, Caden, is a tall, broad-shouldered young man who shares his father's wide smile and confident kindness, minus all the body art. So over the sound of barbershop razors, clippers, and dryers, you're going to hear Todd talk about the significance of creating moments that purposely build on the father-son relationship. You'll hear why sometimes we need to get away from the demands of everyday life and focus on just being together. Listen close and you hear how important it is to honor and celebrate boys becoming men and why letting go can actually bring a relationship closer together. So welcome to a barbershop conversation about the importance of father-son bonding in raising confident, capable, and kind kids. You just came back from an adventure trip. I sure did. Was it Montana? Yes, Montana. We were in the middle of Montana. Just me and my boy, just just the two of us. And so I've known for a long time that I wanted to do some sort of trip see things we haven't seen, do things we haven't done, and do all this and experience all these things together. Just he and I. No sister, no mom. Right. And uh, and we haven't done that before. We've never done that. So this was a big deal. And just got back two days ago. So how long was the trip? Seven days. Big sky country. Big sky. And, and, you know, you hear that, big sky country, big sky. Like, what does that mean? What is, what are you, what is that, big sky? You can't explain it until you go there. Have you been? Yeah. Love Montana. Life changing. So you're on a ranch. Yeah. Are you ranching? Are you helping? Uh, you don't strike me as a, a cowboy. I, I've seen right. your motorcycle. Right. You that's, ride a hog, not a horse. Right. Right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Is this a working ranch? Is this like a dude ranch or is this a, a, a uh, tourist ranch? Yeah. You, uh, no, they're not. They're not putting you to work. You're not. You know. You're not breaking your back. You know, for someone. You're every not day. moving 500 cattle off the high country down into the valley to, to well, pasture. Well, now I did do a cattle drive. That was one of my goals going there was to be part of a cattle drive, and you had to, you had to test on your horse to be able to go on certain rides, be a part of the cattle. Drive. You had to qualify. They they're not going to let just any tourist. <laughs> I just let any guy with a bunch of tattoos right, jump on a horse. Anyone. <laughs> so I don't care what you paid. You gotta. You still right, gotta. You still gotta. Yeah. But uh, so we went there. It's it's mainly a horse ranch, and that's that's why we went there. We went there to ride horses. We wanted to be on horses. There was there's other activities. There's all kinds of activities you can do. It all. So wait, when you say activities, we're talking about okay. Obviously, you're on horseback. Yeah. And then there's what? Shooting, fishing, rafting? That's right. Rafting. There's, there's what shooting. Are you doing? There's, uh, there's shooting. There's target shooting. There's clay shooting. There's uh, fly fishing. There is um, what else? Archery, where they take you through the through the woods, and it's like a it's kind of like a, a course that you would go through, and they have like black bear set up and deer and elk and antelope, you know, fake. Not real, John. I don't know. I ran into a black bear last weekend on the hiking trail. So I wondered. I saw. I just saw that video. I was <laughs> like, 
I, is he still alive? Are we still able to do this podcast? Yeah, I saw we'll, that. we'll talk about that maybe later. Erica's <laughs> wondering the same thing when I sent her the video from the mountain. And that's it. No follow-up phone call for an hour. So she thought maybe I got eight. So. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this is my like, like last will and testament or something. That video was so... Um, like startling scary i wondered if it was fake like i thought maybe maybe he took a video maybe it was for social media maybe it was a laugh that he took a video of this black bear and did a voiceover on top of it for for shiggles nope right? that was 100 percent real <laughs> there was some shiggling happening I was, I was laughing in something else it was scary but it was cool anyway back to montana like let's go back to montana so here we are talking like two men so what'd you do I went horseback riding, I shot guns, I went fishing, I rode an e-bike, you know, I did did these things. That's not why you went to Montana, though. Right. You went to Montana to spend time with your son. That's what it was all about. How'd that go? It was, it was amazing. It was, it was, uh, so let me, let me say this, let me back up. So when I was looking at these adventure ranch trips, the price tag was a little shocking, right? Yeah, yeah. And it took me a while to pull the trigger on it because of the price. But, you know, looking back now, you, you can't put a price on it. I would, I would have paid double, Jonathan. I would have paid double. I would have paid triple. If I would have, if I would have had to take a loan out to do this with my son, I would have. Yeah. Not because of the activities, but because of the time spent with your son. Time spent with my son... The memories that we made, the, the time shared together, um, just when you, you know, and then you, then you got to kind of, you kind of look at it as an investment. Like it's, it's a selfless act of love. It's an investment. It's making memories. It's. But an investment you know, in, in your relationship? Sure. In our relationship. And, and making those memories and, and those memories that we'll, that we'll both have forever. You're building the kind of memories that bond you, Caden, together. Yes. We've always had a tight bond, a tight relationship forever. We've been through a lot together. There's been a lot of changes and, and things that, you know, happen along the way. But our relationship has always been unbreakable. As a father and son. Well, you're a purposeful father. Yes, very. You've seen him come from a boy yeah. into a man just in the last few years. Yeah. He's always been a um, polite young man. He's always been respectful. Um, but his character, he's just different in his, the way his heart and mind are together. He's uh, always up. He's game for anything. Yeah. Yeah. And he's all, always has a positive outlook, positive mindset, um, not afraid of hard work, doesn't let barriers or roadblocks stop him from achieving what he wants to achieve. Okay, so why is that? That's a great question. I don't know how, but... Um, yeah, you do. It's, you do. I mean, I've, I, you Come know, on, you know I'm, how. You know how. It is, it is you and I admit that, that we're not perfect beings. I mean, I meet a lot of parents that will not admit their flaws to their kids. It's and relentless parenting. Oh, it's, 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 it's an always thing. It's on. It's always on. It's yeah. It's not a sometimes it's not a sometime thing. It's a relentless. There's no pause in parenting. No. Where did you see yourself be challenged as a father? In Montana? Yeah. With your son. How did you see yourself be challenged as a father? You know, the challenges were on gosh, my own part. I've had a handful of, of, of really nice vacations. But it always takes me a while to decompress. Once I decompress, it's like it's the next day and it's time to go home. This was different in that I decompressed. It took me two hours. That's all the time you needed to shed all the burdens of... Once, and it's never happened in my life like that. Why? How did it happen? Give us a secret, because I know that I'd like to know. Man, the ride from Great Falls to the ranch 
was two hours, and it was like every every mile we went, I was decompressing. Maybe it was the the wide openness, the as far as you can see nothing, the the wide open pastures and rolling hills and mountains. It was it was it was like layers of beauty, hmm. and I found a lot of comfort in that solitude in that no one was around in that there wasn't any traffic you wouldn't see them there you wouldn't come across another car for miles yeah and there is something about that that I absolutely loved. When was your bonding moment at the ranch? Oh gosh. The first thing we, we actually did was when we got in the ranch, we got to our cabin. And our cabin, our front, our little front porch had a little two-seater bench on it. And we sat together on that little two-seater bench and looked out at the pasture the big Montana sky. And we actually didn't say anything for a long time. We took it all in together and then just enjoyed the silence, enjoyed the peace, enjoyed the beauty that we've never experienced before. And that was the start of our trip son can't wait two days for you to unplug in order to have that experience right you can't get there and be on your phone and you know checking emails or whatever that's not being present that's you you have to to put that stuff down and you know in the grand scheme of things you know you're in montana with your son on a trip just you and him when are you going to get that again is that email that important? I'll, I'll argue that Tuesday night at your house having dinner is the equivalent to being in Montana on a holiday. I, my kids never getting that moment back with me or I with them. So when I'm on my phone checking my email or some LinkedIn alert or something stupider, I'm stealing that. No, I'm not. I'm allowing that time to be stolen from us but I right. allowed it they, right. it wasn't stolen like because I wasn't aware I was fully aware y- yeah and you you did it I allowed it to happen I did it I fully engaged yeah we don't allow cell phones at the dinner table yeah neither do we the, when the boys were little and they first got their phones and it was always in their pocket and they pulled out the dinner table I'd ask them who did you bring to dinner with you <laughs> Now they've learned, and, and but there was a there's a time where the phones were on the counter, away from the dinner yeah. table. No matter what that phone did, it right. wasn't important. Right. Now nobody looks at their phones at dinner. You can be in your pocket; it's fine. Mature people can handle a, your phone alerting you in your pocket when, right. at dinner and not look at it. Yeah. You and I are sitting here; we're not looking at our phones. I happen no. to have seen your phone text message gone off about a half a dozen times. You haven't even looked down at it. No. Yeah, that's that's no. discipline. That's just maturity. Yeah. So here you guys are on a porch, We're on the in porch, Montana, and, bonding. And I, yeah, and I, I again, I'll say that's, you know, the ride there was beautiful, but I feel like that moment is when the trip started. Hmm. Okay, so that's moment one. Yeah. You said the first time, you bonded elsewhere also. Oh. Oh. Uh. Seeing him on a horse for the first time. Wait, that was the first time you'd ever ridden a horse? When you're on, when they're five, and you you set them on a pony and they cry, that's not the same thing. Oh, yeah, I was like, my my wife was like, uh, you know, you know, she was all about be careful, you know, insurance, blah blah blah, don't break anything. And so I'm like, is it gonna be me or him? <laughs> <laughs> Which one of us is going to go down? Which one of us is going to break something first? And you know, I was concerned about myself, but of course I'm more concerned about him. But we just got so comfortable in, in, a, in a day. In a day, we we're so comfortable. So then we were like, all right, well, we want to go faster. 
We want to ride. I came here to ride. That's what I want to do. I want to ride. Trail walking. Right. I don't want to trail walk for six days or so. I want to ride a horse like a cowboy. I want to learn how to rope. I want to be a part of a cattle drive. I want all the things. I I want the skull ring in the back of my pocket. So, then I think it was the next day. There was an opportunity to take the speed test. And I'm feeling good. I'm feeling confident on my horse. And then they tell me, you know, well, your horse, you know, your horse bites and kicks. Like, so do you. So, right. <laughs> right. Perfect so I. match. I like the horse. His name was Jasper. I'm like, I don't, I barely know what I'm doing, right? Second time I've been on a horse, but I'm going to do this speed test. And on like, Jasper. On Jasper. And I'm like, Caden, do you want to do this? More like with Jasper. With Jasper. Like, he's taking me for the ride, right? I'm like, just be good to me. So I'm like, Caden, do you want to do this speed test? I'm like, well, Caden, what if one of us makes it and the other one doesn't? And one of us can't do the advanced rides. What are we going to do? Or one of us can't do the cattle drive. What are we going to do? And I'm thinking, geez, should I, what's going to happen here, right? So we both get on our horses. His horse name was Stash which was very cool stash. And so we go with the Wranglers. We go out in the pasture. We, I do my test. I'm just hanging on, trying to keep my feet in the stirrups. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, Caden's not going to be able to do this. First time on a horse, blah, blah, blah. So, so I go. I do, the, I do the test. I do the, the test a couple times. And she's like, she's like okay. You're, you're good. I'm like, what? All right. So then Caden goes. He does his thing. He passes too. I don't know how we did it, Jonathan. I really don't. I mean, we're yeehawing and yipping it up on a horse, you know, like like some tourists, you know. And uh, it was great. It was, it was a great feeling. It was yeah. a great feeling. We both make it. We both get to do everything that we want to do. Everything, everything's great. And it was it was just fantastic. It was it was fantastic, Jonathan. It was uh, it was like what I pictured in my head for us was happening together, which was the only thing that mattered. So we get to do all the things together, and we get to take in. We get to go on all these rides. We get to go through. We get to go through the Lewis and Clark National Forest together. Right. At any point, did you like have to recognize, literally in your brain, say, "Let him go"? I mean, that's the hardest thing for parents to let their kids go. I'm still struggling with that. Yeah. Well, we all are <laughs> as parents. But yeah. is there any point where you had to say, "You know what? This is him. This yeah. is not me. I'm not. I have no hands on the on the wheel. I have yeah. no influence on the decision. Yep. This is 100 percent him. Yeah. Let go." Yeah, he's, he's, yeah, he's a man. He's, you kind of. Well, well, I'm going to, I'm going to push back on you right now. Right. You grow old enough and you become a man. It doesn't make you mature enough right. to be independent. Or, right. And there's a level above independence. So the three levels are dependence. You need me to do for you, which our kids have all gone through. That's part of, you know, birthing kids, right? They, they need us. Right. Dependent. Then there's independent. I can do this for myself. You start hearing that from kids as soon as they say, right. no, daddy, let me do it. Let me do it. Let myself. me do it. But then interdependent. Interdependent is I can do this all by myself, but I'd rather do it together with you because together we're better. Yeah. So I know you saw times where your son was completely independent. This is the hardest part where parents let their kids just simply be independent. But when that child no longer a child like an infant, but when they're, they're, my children turn to me and say, will you join me? That's an interdependent value. Yeah, there was a, there, yeah, there was a spot when I realized he doesn't need me. Yeah. Yeah, there was a point where he's, he's fine. He's good. He doesn't need me. That was, that's tough. Why? 
wouldn't it be tougher if he did as a right, young, right? young tw- you, you would know, you're right exactly his 20s year old right you don't young want man. that yeah. and you don't want you don't want that right your our jobs are to get to him to that point to where you're oh he he doesn't need me he's good yeah it should be a celebration right it should be but it's it's difficult it's good it's great but it's difficult it's happy, but it's sad. Yeah. But thankfully it happens. Yeah. Happened with you and your son. What yeah. a blessing. Yeah. But he turns back to you and says, let's do this together. Yeah. Everything, we didn't separate. We didn't separate for a minute. And we got into a routine in the evenings of... After dinner, we we would shoot pool. There was a pool table, and they had a rec room and a fireplace and a pool table, and we would shoot a couple games of pool every night after dinner, and that kind of got to be our thing. And then we'd go to the cabin. I'd smoke a cigar out on the on the. Uh, we'd we'd sit on the porch together again in that little two seater chair and look out over the pasture and the rolling hills and the mountains and 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 livestock and animals and and just take it all in. And we would talk and uh, talk about anything. And uh, it could be about the ranch. It could be about, you know, our, our day. We would go through our day together and what we liked best. And uh, we would talk about what's coming up for him. And, and we would talk about those things. And anything goes kind of, kind of stuff, you know, father-son stuff. And, uh, and then at night, uh, we would actually... Uh, crawl into bed and watch a movie and I haven't done that with my son since he was a a little little boy and for him to want to do that for him to want to do that with me was kind of overwhelming you don't again you don't get that time back So every night, we would eat dinner together, shoot pool together, maybe have a cigar, and watch a movie. One night it was a western, one night it was a comedy. Those moments, I'll take to the grave. You just don't get that time back. You. So I, you know, I did, you know, it made me do, made me do something I haven't done in a long time. I pray. About what? I prayed to I. I prayed that I had that opportunity and that, that, that I prayed that God gave it to me. I prayed that, I prayed that he showed me the beauty of that landscape, that land, that lifestyle. I prayed for the time with my son, just being grateful and thankful. But those, I just, it's been a long time since I've done that. You know, and you take things for granted and uh, you just take the days as they come and you, you do what you gotta do and you, you move on. But it's those moments. Uh, those are the moments that matter. You're known in the community as a man who runs a shop, Sambuco's Barber Shop, that is more than just a place to come get a haircut. It's a place to connect. And, but yet, you're known by your children as a father who is the safest person the safest place to connect like that and you know what shops and jobs come and go but our family man that's what I'm hearing you say that's what matters most yeah it is it really is it goes so fast and you don't realize it and you can you can hear it from other people you can hear other people say it 
but you don't quite get it until you're older, until it's your son that's growing up and moving on and moving out. And then you look back and you're like, wow, how did this happen? Right, so drop some wisdom on us, man. For all the dads that are listening, whose kids are younger than ours, what would you say they really should consider doing in order to make a moment like this as valuable as you've experienced? I'd say, I'd say make it happen. Make it happen no matter what you have to do. As busy as we are, you're, you're not too busy to be present. You're no. just, you're just not. Don't, don't tell, don't, don't fool yourself or tell yourself that you're just too busy. Cause that's, it's BS. If you want to take a good look, it's BS. Because that time will be gone before you know it. You know, I'm not saying live in a shack. I'm saying you have to, you have to be present. You have to put in the time. You have to make time. It has to be a priority because you're going to wake up and be, you're going to be sorry. Or you're going to wake up and be blessed because you put in the time. You put in the yeah. effort. Look how blessed you are. Yeah. This is yeah. something you will take with you. You said take to the grave. How about this? You're going to live this the rest of your life. Oh, I am. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I, absolutely. That time together, we're always going to have that together. Memories, pictures, action, all those things. Relationship. Yeah. Amen to that. Can't take that away. Can't take that away. Thank you for joining Todd Sambuco and I in today's conversation about the significance of father-son bond. If you're a father, Todd and I both believe one of the best investments you can ever make is in your kids. If you're enjoying and learning from this and other episodes of the Raising Them Ready podcast, be sure to get a copy of the Raising Them Ready book. It's available wherever you buy print, digital, and audio books. There you'll also find our other best-selling life skills and personal development books and resources for tweens, teens, young adults, parents, educators, and mentors. To learn more about booking me as a guest speaker for your youth, parent, educator, or professional development conference, or about my consulting services, please send me a message through our social media pages or email me through our website. You can find, like, and follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Raising Them Ready Podcast and on our website at RaisingThemReady.com. Also, please follow and leave us up to a five-star review wherever you listen to this podcast. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions about topics or guests you'd like us to bring to the Raising the Ready podcast, I'd like to hear from you. Contact me through our social media page or website, again, on Facebook and Instagram at Raising the Ready podcast and online at RaisingTheReady.com. Now, parents, go and enjoy your kids. Knowing your child's greatness tomorrow begins with your guidance today.